Excuse me, you're looking for a new suit? Armani, Versace, Paul Smith, Yves Saint Laurent, 100 quid each. Oh no. Why not? I'd say about uh, 42 regular, 38 waist by 34 leg. 36 waist. What do you fancy? I've got a nice pinstripe, a Prince of Wales check, or how about a cool, our man in Havana style, white suit? Pinstripe. Good choice. Timeless. That's a tummy, you. Habeas corpus, that's called. Habeas corpus. I'm just clearing my ears. You're not entirely normal, do you know that? I think I'm in love. A bit out of your league. And your reach. A man's desire should always be just beyond his reach. Isn't that asking for disappointment? Yeah, most of the time, but every now and then you get a result and those are the days you remember. Glimpse of triumph. Exactly. We all have greatness in us. He who dares, dangerous. He who dares. Two of those, please, and whatever you're having. I'm not drinking it. Where's Verk? Is that in Poland? <laughs> Pimlock. 
go back to sleep. Aww. Yeah. No, no. the outfit. Oh, you can't keep a body in this sort of condition without putting the hours in dangerous. <sighs> Pilates class, seven o'clock. You joined the gym? Of course not, way too expensive. Katrina's an instructor. I get into her classes for free. Blimey, you work fast. Oh, she's dead keen. <clears throat> There's no such thing as a free Pilates class. of passengers paying cash. How enough is that? A champagne bottle. That stuff gives me heartburn. He was cut with it. Can't see the bottleneck. No glass in front, so either he was in the back or leaning through the divide when it happened. Always wanted to ride in a limo, but now I'm having second thoughts. Looks better from the outside. Someone's been busy. No wonder it's got tinted windows. Look, I can't talk now. Someone wants me. I'll speak to you later. Are you the manager? No, but if you see one, let me know. DC Davis, Wellston, CID. Who was driving the Lincoln registration X422OLC last night? Oh, hang on. Sorry, I haven't been here that long. Ah, oh, talk of the devil. Tony Hill, the governor. You wouldn't have a photograph of Mr. Hill, I suppose? Maybe. What's this about? Can I see it? Bear with me. The filing system is loosely based on the chaos theory. Do the passengers pay the driver in cash? Sometimes. Or credit cards. Ah, here we go. From chaos comes order, eh? Not exactly an oil painting, is he? I'll need the names and contact details of his passengers from last night. Why? He's not crashed, does he? I mean, he is all right. Can anyone who witnessed anything please make themselves known to me? What's your name? Hello? 
Can I help you? Mrs. Linda Hill. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't think I can do this now. I understand, but it is important. What do you need to know? Everything. Can you count the bastard that did this? I'll try. Will you just give me a moment? Tell me about the business. He loved it. Being his own boss. It was just taking off. We were starting to make good money. I wanted him to work the day shift. Less nutters, but um, most people hire the limos at night, so he won that one. Were you worried when he didn't come home this morning? Yeah, I was. Um, some jobs take longer, or it grab a couple of hours, keep in the back of the limo and then do another pick-up before midday. <laughs> I understand you'd all lived abroad until six months ago. Yeah. Montevideo. Uruguay? How long? Tony was there about mid-90s. I arrived about five years ago. I was a stewardess on a stopover. Like quite the pool for pool. Just landed or about to take off? Just landed. Three days stopover. Heaven. Just my luck. They swept me off my feet. What did Tony do out there? For work? Not much, to be honest. Um, chauffeuring a few rich expats, mainly to keep him from getting bored. If we had some money of our own. A pound goes a long way in Uruguay. Monopoly money. <laughs> Bloody Monopoly money! <laughs> Just a guess. First class. Always. I quit my job and, um... We got married on Paradise Beach. When we had Leo. Do you miss Montevideo? It was a perfect life. Great standard of living, lovely weather, friendly people. What's not to miss? Did Tony? No, not really. He was, um, he was homesick. He liked the change of the seasons. Queen's Park, Bloody Rangers. Decent cup of tea, warm beer. Things were good between you. Yeah. Mummy. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Mummy. He always got the allotment in his favourite patch of England. Is there someone you could contact? Relative, a friend? No. It's just us now. See Miss Langham. Come in. It's this way. Wait in there. been a very naughty boy. I'm a policeman. You've been a very naughty policeman. Neil! No, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Ah! Obey me or you'll be getting the wrong end of it. Now, on your knees! You're not my 1045? 
Had he been driving you long? About six months. How often? A couple of times a week. The limo is one of my most popular services. The punters love it. And Tony didn't mind? Mind? The goings on in the back. Not at all. He was a pro, just like me. I did my thing, he did his. I talked to him occasionally on the intercom, but that was all the contact we had during sessions. The rest of the time, I was like any other passenger. And your clients, what are they like? I get all sorts. Men are men, Mr. Davis, and sex is a great leveller. I'll need a list of their names. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I'm afraid not. You've uh, met my assistant, Ursula. On the door? Yeah. If you'd like to spend some time with her, you'd be more than welcome. She's keen as mustard. Let's just stick with the list of names, shall we? <laughs> Are you trying to put me out of business? How about the one from last night? No chance. We now know that Tony Hill dropped the hen party off in the West End at 10.30. He went on to a late night pole dancing lesson, all accounted for. Then he picked up Gillian Langham just before midnight, drove her and a punter around for an hour. She got it full. Money for listening. Whoa! Ah, move your hands! It was an honest mistake. <laughs> Is that it? Now, just before 2 a.m., he collected a Mr. Ryan from outside Club Z. The call to book the limo was made from a phone box opposite the club. Mr. Ryan paid cash. Oh, yeah, that's a bit sus. That's what we thought. More support than I'm used to. Thanks for sharing that with me, Dangerous. All right, you lot. Between now and the big match, I want you practicing every spare minute. I want you fit. I want you mean and hungry. I've got the honour of Wilson CID to uphold here. How much you got riding on it this year? 50 quid. Right, let's start with a few laps. Jojo? It's gonna be the death of me. The severed artery in his neck caused massive blood loss and killed him almost instantly. Time of death? Between about 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. Now, have a look at this. He's had nearly as much plastic surgery as that American woman, the Bride of Wildenstein. Plastic surgery? Nose job, cheekbones remodelled, chin reduced. Oh, and his hair's dyed. Cost him about 50 grand, I'd say. Plus 3.99 for the Grecian 2000. Change of face, live in Uruguay for a decade. Who have you been hiding from? No, 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 not that way. Next one along. Mod to dangerous. First proper date tonight. I can't believe it. I'm taking Katrina bowling. You try to impress her with your athleticism. I happen to be a very good bowler. I could have gone pro. Yeah. Help me push this out a bit. Will you? Yes, it. Where'd you get this? The deceased shed. Ow. Look, maybe I should call Billy the Pipes, yeah? Electrics and plumbing are very particular skills. You need a certificate these days. I'm not paying a hundred quid for some cowboy to come and change a washer. I'm just saying it's dangerous. Dangerous? It's plumbing. It's not rocket science. Just switch it back on. I thought your man was a limo driver. He was. It's 
But whose is that? According to their records, the badge number belonged to a Jim Horner. Jim Horner? The Jim Horner? Oh, yeah, right. You knew him, of course. No, not personally. It was all over the papers. An Arabic fellow left his briefcase in his cab, containing two million pounds in cash. Are you serious? Imagine dangerous. Two million. Nobody ever saw Horner again. They found his cab abandoned at the airport. Meter still running. Some say... Still is. Yeah, Tony Hill is Jim Horner. They're one and the same. Just tell Pimlaw he'll understand. He walked off with two million quid. There's bound to be a file on him somewhere. I want to know who lost the money, who ran the investigation. Yeah, OK, thanks. Bye-bye. <clears throat> used to walk his dogs. <clears throat> Hello, Mum. Coming in for a bite and an egg, Sonny. Actually, I need to ask you a few questions, Cyril. Oh, uh, he's with me. Do you remember a bloke called Jim Horner? Yeah, of course. What about him? He was a friend. Yeah, you could say that, yeah. We did the uh, knowledge together, yonks ago. Uh, excuse me, I need to... Little boys were... <clears throat> Go on. Did knights, too. Uh, thought it was a good earner. Well, <laughs> it was for him. <laughs> well, speaking of which... I've uh, better be off, living in the lake and all that. Would you mind if I just uh, came along for the ride? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Bloody hell. We think he might have been working for a limo company in Wollstone. Jim Horner? A limo driver? Give it a rest. No, he'd be lying on his back somewhere. Knocking back pina coladas while some local lovely gives him a nice massage. Ah. Oi! What's it, you dope fat? God, dear cyclists. Have they got a death wish or what? Is that Ken Livingston, you know, bloody commie? He's made it impossible for drivers, so now they're all using bikes. What's he trying to do? Turn London into Beijing? You were telling me about Jim Horner. No, Jim. Ah, oh, he's a cabbie through and through, mate. Wouldn't be seen dead in a bleeding Ponzi limo. <laughs> oh, you know he isn't, is he? Very so. Luck finally ran out there, did it? Oh, well. He was a character, I'll say that. Whatever you think of him for doing that to Karen, his mates, went off without a diggy bird. That's it. Woof. Then again, he was only human, fallible, right? Tempted. Who wouldn't be? Funny thing is, when I knew him, he, he was always broke. Never seen the mine, though. Still owes me for a packet of fags, as it happens. Got any ciggies? I'm clean out. Uh, help yourself. Menthol? <laughs> Just my luck. As this is Cyril. As a dodo, mate. Let not give it an hour, they'd have it on the head. You? Nah, I'll stay out until it rises. Bills to pay. Avoiding the missus, more like. She's handsome woman, though. What's she doing with you, eh? Hold up. Tell him we've been waiting here two hours. I asked him, I said, how come you get all the fares? What have we done wrong? Just my luck, mate. And that was the call. Could have come to any one of us. That night, Jim got it. Jammy sod. The rest is history. Oh, hold up. Here's one. Where to? Gatwick. You mind? I've got to admit, if I found a couple of million quid in the back seat, I'd be tempted. No, no, don't get me wrong, I'm a Londoner. There isn't a better place in the world for a working man to live, but... I mean, I don't dream of something different. Of escaping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes when I'm stuck in traffic, I look at the fare in the back and... I'll check out his luggage and I wonder if, well, you know, do me a favour, when you see Karen, tell her hello from me. Will do. Cheers.
Thank you. Dixie Davis Wills for the CID. I always knew one day someone like you would come along. I knew he'd end up killed. Why is that, Mrs. Hall? You can't get that lucky without something bad happening somewhere along the way. Life's not like that. I know it, you know it. We all do, really. 17 years we were married. Were there children? No. It never happened. I thought he was a normal, decent bloke doing an honest job. And then like that, he was gone. Your lot said, oh, don't worry, he's probably on the lash or something. A day or two later, I open the paper and there he is. Goes to show. We don't really know anybody, do we? I mean, not properly. Not what's going on up here. It's like you get these serial killers and the neighbours always say how nice they were. People, eh? I can do without them myself. Was there another woman? Eventually. They met whilst abroad, got married. Kids? Five-year-old boy. A bastard. I want to see Jim. I want to know it's really him. I have to tell you, Mrs. Holly, you may not recognise him. He's had cosmetic surgery to alter his appearance. The eyes are still the same. Couldn't change them. Back early? Yeah, it's all the Gobi out there, no trade. Should have given me a ten call, I'd have made you something nice. Ah, no worries, love. Hey, look at this, some dozy fare left it behind. Thought I'd drop it down the depot. I'll only get wrong on the weekend. I'll get some fried chicken on the way. Just grab me wallet, send me other jacket. Who am I calling dozy, eh? Fried chicken? Come back for his passport, more like. I was stood there, a briefcase with all that money in it, as near to me as you are now. You sure you don't want me to fix you something? Won't take me ten minutes. Don't weigh up, love. You know what that place is like, chucking out time on a Friday. Do you know, I thought something was up, but... Drive careful. I didn't say nothing. Bye. Maybe I didn't want to know. He must have looked at that money and figured, right, I'm shot of her. Good riddance. How hard would it have been to take me with him? Instead, he left me with debts. Neighbours all knowing, you lot breathing down my neck. That bloody Aljabar. Mohammed Aljabar. Yeah, that's him. He's heavy as outside my place, month after month, banging on my door. I said, you find out where he is. You come and tell me. Bury it with him. Can I ask you something? How old am I? Have a guess, be honest. 47. 45. You know I'm pushing 60. Just being polite, right? No, really, you're, you're very... Uh... I thought I'd keep myself nice. Don't let yourself go, that's what I said. I thought if I did that and you ever came back, you'd see what you missed. Don't matter now. You just leave the meter running. Just imagine, no mortgage, invest half of it, buy a place in the sun, you never have to work again. I bought it out of my skull. I wouldn't. Just tell me, what would be the first thing you'd do if someone gave you two million quid? Get a new washing machine. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what about a Porsche or a Ferrari? Or taking me to Venice on the Orient Express? Oh, sure, of course it would. Who wouldn't? We could live in the Caribbean. Wake up every morning in paradise. Turquoise waters lapping at our feet. Oh, what then? That cabbie came home. Maybe that was his mistake. Maybe it wasn't appreciating what he already had. It's nice to have the place to ourselves, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you wearing? 
Pyjamas. You can't wear them. They're so unsexy. Unsexy? You gave them to me. Well, that was then. This is now. Things have changed. I fancy you again. Get them off. <laughs> Bloody hell. Go and shut the door. Dangerous. <laughs> Some earplugs. What number is it? Well, I'll just look for the gaudiest patch you can see. One, four, five. You'll be lucky to find any furniture to sit on. You're a collector, I take it. No, I'm a reader. Collecting's a hobby. Found a knack for seeking out rare first editions. People will pay thousands for them if they manage to prize them off me. What you were expecting. Tell us about losing the money. I was partying hard back then. Out of it most of the time, only really interested in birds, booze, and Bolivian marching powder. We were at a casino. I wasn't gambling that night. When my father was at a table, he just stood back and gave him the room. One of the last gentlemen gamblers. For my father, it was all about honour. He'd entrusted it to me to take home. And your father? Not available for questioning. Well, it'd have to be. He died six years ago. I would, of course, have inherited my family's fortune. Right now, I'd doubtless be soaking in a steam bath off the Edgware Road while my chauffeur was cleaning the Bentley. If things had gone differently. Jim Horner. Yes. The late Jim Horner. Nice brief up, right? Yeah, turn it up. No, no, drop me here. This will do. Keep the chase. Oh, cheers, mate. So, girls, where's the party? Right here. How much you got to play with? Never dreamed of. Shit! By losing the money, I dishonoured him, so he disowned me. I had to make my own way. Which is how I ended up here. Wilsdon is a long way from Knightsbridge. But you tried to get the money back. I spent months trying to find him. Paid out thousands for information that never led to anything. I so wanted to come face to face with that man. He made me a laughing stock destroyed my relationship with my father. And then when I finally found out where he was, it was like an echo from the past. Forgotten. I'd moved on. How did you find out? From her, his wife. Karen Horner? Yes, two or three years after my father died. There is a woman still bitter, still set on revenge. It's no good. Just eat you up inside. Now, if I had the chance of meeting Jim Horner, I'd thank him. Who'd have thought that I, of all people, would be sad that he's dead? Life is so full of ironies. Well, thanks for talking to us, Mr. Osborne. What do you think? Lying on the way to the sook, isn't he? Diggo, 
was another one? Oh, they all think the bloody coppers are in here. You are Julie? Yes. I'm Katrina. I hope you don't mind. I help myself. Maud's asleep. I not want to wake him. No, that's fine. Oh, excuse me. You did not sleep well? Oh, no, like a baby. Good. We all need our beauty sleep to keep our men. You know Maud well, no? Fairly well. I just met him in the pub. He's amazing. I'm frequently amazed by him. The big man. <laughs> Morning, Jay. Uh, kettle's just boiled if you need to pick me up. Oh, great. Good idea. I go upstairs. See you in a minute. What? Parked outside my flat all day. Nobody in it. Now you tell me what the point of that is, eh? I really wouldn't know, madam. Oh, don't you come it with me, love. Excuse me. Dangerous. Is it your fault? All this? I'll sue you. Oh, I think you'll find the Road Traffic Act will cover us, Miss Langham, but uh, you got a problem, so have I. I need to know who that client was. I'm not telling you. You can arrest me if you want. But I will not grass on a client. I don't have it downstairs. They ain't got room. Well, what's it doing up here anyway? Indecent assault charge. Oh, what do they expect me to do? Make a statement? No, I think it's more a forensic sort of thing, actually, Gov. They're getting ready to perform. Yeah, all right, thank you. I don't want to know. Just get it out. Yes, Gov. Dangerous? No, no, not you. I want you. Come here, in my office. Let me show you. Come on, then, mint saucer. Gary, this is uh, DC Davies, a.k.a. Dangerous. Gary Solway, mate. Pleased to meet you. Or governor back in the day. SIO on the Jim Horner case. Retired now, of course, but for the price of a scotch, I'll fill you in on a few details. Tell you a few stories about him and all. <laughs> How far'd you get? Well, we tried everything to trace him. Liaise with Interpol. Attempted to follow the money trail. Not that there was one. Substantial rewards were offered, but we got nothing. Frustrating. Except for two weeks in Rio, yeah. Just a thong at twilight. No, he was unpredictable. Damn near impossible to find. Amateur, see. Dead amateur now. So, do you have any leads? A few. What about suspects? Two wives, Mr. Al Jabbar, his last passenger, the elusive Mr. Ryan, and the mystery punter of a certain dominatrix named Gillian Langham. Oh, don't forget Lord Lucan. Come on, try whittling down a bit, eh? Yes, Gov. Sounds like you've got some problems with your own, Constable. We'll get a break. Yeah, that's what I thought. Off you go, then. Thanks. And don't forget football practice tonight, 5.30 sharp. And no excuses. You knew where he was, didn't you? You knew five years ago. No, exactly. Just the city, and that's what I told Al Jabbar. And what did you expect Mr. Al Jabbar to do with that information? You think I wanted Jim dead? Did you? Maybe. Some days. I don't know. Can't seem to move my life on. I've tried. Told myself he was on the other side of the world. I nearly managed it, too, after a few years. And then these started turning up. There. That's 
that's what kicked it all off again. 55 grand. He sent it. Grand a month up until about six months ago. No note. No forwarding address. Just the money. It's all there. I haven't touched it. I knew it was him as soon as I saw the postmark. Montevideo. It's where they played the first World Cup. He was a football nut, him and his mate never missed a game. I didn't want the money. Just my life back. He wasn't going to buy me off with a grand a month. I'm worth a bit more than that, thanks very much. Looks to me like he was thinking of him, Mrs. Honor. Maybe he was trying to put something right. And he should have left me alone. Let me move on. He sent that money to make himself feel better, not me. If Jim had wanted to put anything right, he'd have come back. Now what happens to it? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Why don't you keep it? for Jungle Japes. Fear not. Tonight we will relive those golden moments that make series four of our celebrity. Once ah, yeah. <laughs> Screwed it all up, did you? Oh, no, nah, man. Ah, it's true, do you know that? It's a tragic loss to the beautiful game. Our generation, Ray, the oh, best. Right. Never mind all these plonkers with their laptops and PDAs. Hey, hey. Better find the cab for your governor. Oh. Full hail. Next hey. In, in, in. Augustus Lane, nice fourth of all. Oh, I'm forever blind. We bubbles. Red and bubbles in. Hi. No, no. Just relax. It's sorted. Do you think it'll last between them? Who? Modern Katrina. I don't think so. He's got his doubts. She hasn't. You know why? His dress sense. His encyclopedic knowledge of biscuits. His ability to burp the Irish national anthem. Do I have to spit it out to you? There is more to Maud than we might have imagined. Haven't you ever stood next to him in the urinals? Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> you know nothing about male psychology. You don't lock in the gents. It's against the rules. I was scared of the competition. No! Anyway, it's not about that, is it? You know, it's about... You're not complaining, are you? Of course not. Come here. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I've got the big match tomorrow. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Just pack it in! Dangerous. Dangerous. I need help. Come on. I'm not here. Oh! 
Tell her I've gone away. No, no. Wash. I tried to call her and give her the good night sweetheart routine, but I just couldn't do it. I should think not. I know her phone was engaged. Maud. I can't face it anymore. I'm a spent force. She's sending me to an early grave. That's where they go. Dangerous, I'm begging you. Proper old school he was, a copper's copper. How's that? Oh, I tell you, Garrett Cornwood. Dangerous, I am in the middle of a story. Gary Solway could get a confession out of anybody. That was that was his raison d'etre. I tell you, back then, if we had a particularly unpleasant tow rag in the cells, the custody sergeant would go down and offer him some legal representation, naturally, which more often than not he would accept. Then Gary would go into his cell and pretend to be his brief. Oh, never. No, honest. But he had his own business cards and everything. He'd, he'd be wearing this special pinstripe suit, which he kept hanging up in the office just for such occasions. They have a quiet word with a suspect, get as much info out of him as he could, before declaring that the evidence was stacking up and he'd better cop a plea. Bloody hell. Well, even if he didn't go for it, by then we'd found out where all the bodies were buried and uh, we'd nail him before the end of the interview. I tell you, they don't make them like Solway nowadays. Balls of steel. Whoa, what a lovely sight, dangerous. Calamity James would be proud of you, son. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I think I might have something. Gillian Langham, an ex DS Solway, knew each other. He arrested her when he worked vice. That's a hell of a coincidence. The man in charge of the hunt for Jim Horner, connected to the woman Horner was driving the night of his murder? She had a dozen or so convictions towards the end of the 90s. His was the last. She was never nicked again. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Giving him freebies. Or she became his informant. Well, you reckon she tipped so way off that he was driving for her? For old time's sake. Maybe. Mm, well, given his career path after the Horner inquiry, I'd say so way had a motive. Well, what does that mean? Well, after he drew a blank on the Horner inquiry, they stuck him in vice, didn't they? Not quite the illustrious final chapter he'd probably been planning. So he takes early retirement, and we all know what that means. I don't fancy being in your hush puppies, dangerous. Well, someone's gonna have to tell him. It ain't gonna be us. Word to the wise. Make sure you know what you're talking about first. Come with me. Come on. What shall I do? Ball control. Barry on the ball, he shoots. Gosh. You again. We know you were Gary Solway's informant when he worked vice. I'm not a grass and I've never heard of him. You tipped him off about who your driver was. Well, that's news to me. It was Solway in the limo with you, not a punter. That's why you wouldn't give me a name. Do you want to be the one that takes the fall for this? He was murdered. And you're at the bottom of the food chain here, so protect yourself while you still can. How'd you know it was Jim Horner? He had this phrase. Just my luck. He used it all the time. Solway used to moan about this cabbie that got away with two million quid and screwed up his career. He'd found out that this bloke was always saying, just my luck. It used to really wind him up. So, when Tony kept coming out with it... Just my luck. I'll, I'll just go I see... I had a look on the net. And there was Jim Horner. His photo smiling out at me. It, the faces were different, but the eyes, the build. Plus, Tony had been living abroad since about the time the money vanished. So I told Solway. But I never had anything to do with his death. I, I liked him. He was a good bloke. You know, respectful. So why rat on him? Money. Solway always paid well for information. But I regretted it after. Can you remember if the caller had an accent? 
what he sounded like. A woman. What, he had a high-pitched voice? No, it was a woman that made the call. Oh, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, are you sure? I'm telling you, it sounded like a woman. I don't know you're saying it sounded like a woman. Well, it did. Yeah, well, was it a woman or just some bloke whose balls haven't dropped? There's a bit of a difference, you know what I mean? Hang on. No, I want him to get his story straight. How many different ways can I tell you that she was a she? A bird, a lass, a sheila, not a bloke. Comprende? Why didn't you mention this before? You never asked? You're sure it was a bird? Now, let me think. Yes. All right. Can't bad. You just don't want an easy life, do you, Angel? How does you doing what you did back there make my life any easier? Hmm? Chair? Get a job. Get it while it's on, gents. Gillian Langham could have booked the limo for Ryan as a decoy. Yeah. Nice suit. Might look nice, mate, but it's a bastard clean. Now I know why they call you dangerous. You're a bloody loose cannon, you are, mate. There were a few questions. After 30 years of putting bad boys away, I might have expected resentment from some quarters, but not from inside the job, no. I deserve a bit more bloody respect, especially from a nobody like you. Are you still got an idea? Just keep it my hand in. I asked you about the Horner inquiry. I even mentioned Gillian Langham. You never said she tipped you off he was back in the country with a new identity. Nobody tipped me off. I'm retired, remember? You're denying she was your informant? No. But she was one of many. She called me this afternoon, as it happened first time in years. Said you'd been harassing her, Constable. She thinks you're trying to fit me up. You got her to change your story. Mr. Solway has very kindly decided not to make an official complaint against you, Dangerous. Where were you the night of the 15th? Enough! Don't have to answer that, Gary. I was at a Met function. I got 50 or 60 witnesses, all ex-Bill, who swear that I didn't leave till half two in the morning. Convenient. See what I mean? If that isn't harassment, I don't know what is. Have a word with your boy. Or I'll make my complaint official. Now, if you don't mind, I've got places to be. Sorry, Gary, I'll square this out, I will. Please, don't worry about it. You do that. He's lying. What, you're taking the word of some burnt-out slapper against this? You are even dafter than I thought. Do I come all the way down here and start throwing your weight about unless you've got something to hide? Hmm? He's been hanging around here like a bad smell. Why? Because we're investigating Horner. Yeah, he ran the case. Of course, he takes an interest. No, he's bent. Why not admit it? Yeah, now watch it. Unlike you, Dangerous, I am not rushing to condemn a man who's given 30 years of bloody good service to this job. I do not turn in one of my own, and that's where you and me part company. What, you'd rather protect a guilty man just than he used to be a cop? Don't push it. Solway found out Tony Hill's real identity. The man who disappeared with two million quid. The man he's been after for all these years who nearly finished his career. The man he can now have sent to prison by just picking up the phone. Yet he doesn't have him nicked. Why not? Solway's blackmailing him. Things turn nasty, we get a dead limo driver. Yes, what about his alibi? What about all those other policemen? Are they all lying as well? He wasn't even there on the night of the murder. That's why Gillian Langham wouldn't give me a punter's name. There wasn't one. She was on her own. He sent her to do his dirty work. If that's true, we're going to need a shed load of evidence. We'll get it. No, no, you can't. He could make a complaint against you. You can't investigate him. He was a bloody good copper. Oh, Joy. The manager doesn't remember a woman waiting for limo either. When's the doorman getting? Seven. It's been dusted for prints, right? Of course. Didn't find anything. Kids, eh? Out of order. Yeah, a lot of them are these days. No, I meant the phone. 
It's been out of order for a week, so they've vandalized it. Looks like your garden variety coins out to me, Sheriff. It's a proper blockage you got there. Your culprit. Publica Oriental del Uruguay. Wow, what a beauty. Can I have it to add to my collection? Collection? Foreign coins. I collect the ones I find in pay phones. All the places I'll never visit. Sorry. Evidence. Mrs. Hill, a couple of questions. Hi, hi, hey, what's going on, eh? Dangerous is running late, Gov. How late? Leo around? Yes, I'm playing next door. What's going on? Are you planning a trip? No. Why are you taking malaria pills? Is that what you come to ask me? I found this. It's a peso coin from Uruguay. It was fed into a payphone by someone booking a limo in the name of Ryan on the night your husband was murdered. Jammed the phone and prevented any other calls being made. I think your prince will be on it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think Mr. Ryan really exists. I think he was a decoy. You called the limo. It was you who Tony picked up outside the club. You mean Jim? Jim Horner? Not Tony Hill? How long had you known? For years, I just thought he was a businessman. I wanted to believe he was Uruguay's answer to Donald Trump. Even though he'd been ripped off in a series of deals, <laughs> they must have seen him coming. This bloke with more money than sense is trolley dolly in tow. That's when I started looking through the figures. Who's Karen Horner? I don't know. So why are you sending her money? Someone I once knew. Look, I owe the woman, all right. Another lifetime, love. Come on. That's when I found out about the money. How we come by it. Abandoning Karen. Living the life he'd had. Being a cabbie. This man, this big man in a double-breasted suit. Apartment, the nice car. It was all just a fake. He was just a London cabby. I was loyal. Because God knows he loved that little boy. The funny thing is, it got better. Not having all that. all that crap all up front anymore. He seemed to be able to relax, find himself at last. He wanted to come home, didn't he? But he couldn't pretend anymore. He was fed up with Montevideo and it missed London. So he came home. Go on. That tart on the retired copper. They started blackmailing him. We only had a few hundred grand left. Tony said they wanted it all. I said we should just leave. I can't run anymore. Let him have it. That money's been a curse. You and Leo, 
You're the only good things that have happened to me since I found it. We'll be better off, I swear. Eventually I bought flights for all of us. Vista wouldn't listen. I had to give him one last chance to change his mind. I tried his mobile, but he wouldn't answer. So I rang from the phone box, pretending I was a booking. And he turned up. What are you playing at? I'm on a job. I have your job. We're going back to Montevideo tonight. We drove around for a while. Rowan. He admitted the tart had just been in there, demanding that he pay up by the end of the week or face the consequences. It would have been the business next, then the house. But he didn't get it. I couldn't let that happen. Not to my son. He just wouldn't. He wouldn't listen. So I, I told him I had Leo. And we were going with or without him. And he, 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 he just lost it. You'll never take him away from me, never! I won't let you! I love that little boy! Uh, uh, I'm not running anymore! Uh, You're not taking him! Do you hear me? Uh, You're not taking him! Uh, uh, you bitch! Uh, uh, he died there. Right in front of me. It took a few seconds. It's amazing how quickly we cease to exist. One minute we're there and then... Next gone. Makes you think. Nothing we do is that important, really. Two hundred and thirty grand. If I can get on a flight this afternoon with Leah, it's yours. No one will ever hear from us again. Do we have a deal? Press-ups. That's it. Come on, Jerry, come on. I'll tell you what, they look pretty mean. Never mind mean. There's five of them. Oh, dangerous ain't answering. What? Well, we're gonna have to organise a sub. What? Get in, get in! That's a cool girl. Pull up! Go for the middle! Oh, 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 right, right. right. was open. All right, Kapoor. Where'd you learn to play like that then? I've got four brothers. Ah! Whoa. Oh. What you doing? Oh, my shoulder. I want Jim's boy to have this. Will you get it to him? Not try. We uh, just arrested his mum for murder. What will happen to him? Care. No relatives. Don't suppose I could adopt. No, they wouldn't allow that. Not at my age. Make sure he gets it. The money doesn't know where it came from.
I'll have you both on traffic duty the rest of your miserable careers. I know people. I've got friends. Not anymore, you don't. How much you want, me? Right wing, dangerous! Just wrong. Oh, bloody hell. When are you not going to grow up? What? Who brought Larry along? It's nothing to do with us. <laughs> I'll leave it out. Go over that way. Oh. <laughs> Someone offered me a quarter of a million quid this afternoon if I'd let them go. Are you tempted? Well, you know. Then I thought how much it would change my life and. Well, why would I want to? <laughs> Here I'm dying for a pint, shall we just grab it? You ready? As it'll ever be. 